This video covers nine cardinal principles of successful weight management. It is designed for anyone of today who is about to undertake significant weight loss or an intermittent fasting plan. I created this list back in December of 2013 going into 2014 as I began to experience the changes of intermittent fasting on me. So this list goes back a little ways. I find these principles to be immutable, to be true for everyone, particularly of today. Principle number one, it costs calories to be and to stay big. Every decision you have ever made has brought you to this point in your life. That's certainly true of the foods you eat and the weight maintenance journey you're on. Everything goes back to the decisions you make. Now, stone gut theory is my little description for when somebody refers to their weight as not being able to come off. They, they act as if it's somehow just stone laying under the skin against their body. Of course, the truth is, you keep feeding it, and therefore it stays on your body or grows. But the fact of the matter is that for every person who struggles with obesity, it's because you've made decisions in your life that got you to this point, and therefore your body has adapted. Now a set point is the point at which your body is most comfortable maintaining weight. So it, my set point was 345 pounds and eventually 360. My body was comfortable of those weights so that even when I tried to lose, my body would pretty much keep me there. I have so many people that write me and they say, I'm X number of pounds and I keep trying to lose and it's not coming off. Well the reason it probably is in most cases, you're not taking stringent enough measures to control your calories because your body has gotten used to you staying at a certain weight so it's going to keep you there until you speak to it in the language of evolution and say you can't be this heavy anymore and you've got to downsize so that's why lots of weight seems to take forever to get rid of and of course it's not so much that it takes forever but that it seems like it does your body will respond but it costs calories to be and to stay big the plateaus you see they are nothing. They are just the set point. The set points change as you begin to drop weight. The problem is, it's very frustrating to beat them. I have had times in losing where I went to weigh myself, and lo and behold, the scale was higher one day, on one, one of my weigh days. And another day it was the same, another day it was lower. And sometimes that can be very frustrating. Sometimes you feel like you want to faint. You, you feel like you, you just want to give up. But the fact of the matter is, that type of thinking, giving up, is what keeps you at a certain weight. That's why you'll lose and gain the weight back. Because you didn't change your life sufficiently or for long enough. You didn't truly change your life. Cardinal principle number two, a calorie is a calorie is a calorie. Now this has been disputed, but it shouldn't be disputed because the name of the weight loss game is still and will always be about calories in versus calories out. So yes, 3,000 calories of broccoli is fundamentally the same as 3,000 calories of chocolate. It goes back to the old adage of which weighs more, a ton of bricks or a ton of feathers? Well, the same. They're, they're both a ton, right? Now this does not mean that calories from broccoli are exactly the same information-wise, blueprint-wise, as chocolate. One is far less good for you than the other. But as far as energy units are concerned, they are equal. And of course, the application here is that nutrients, not calories, should be thought of as, as blueprints. Components of information from foods that tell your body how to react and how to be, how to perform. But calories themselves are just energy units. You can't forget that because sometimes you can eat too many healthy foods. Regardless, if you're not in the deficit, a sustained calorie deficit, you can never see lasting weight loss. And of course, your life will involve weight maintenance and it will involve both maintaining and losing in cycles. That's always the way it ends up being. Cardinal principle number three, you will eat what is around you. Very important principle and one that is overlooked and ignored by so many people who claim to be dietitians and health coaches. Beware of anyone who restricts certain foods or tells you you can't have certain food types. The exception to that being if you are allergic to something. Anyone who says you can't have dairy or you can't have meat or you can't have carbs is asking for trouble because you live in a society filled with too much food. 
but your fruits are relationships like any other. They should be in your life only if they add value, but they are going to be in your life. So it's kind of like neighbors. You may not get along with your neighbor, but you and your foods must get along one way or the other because you have to live together. Now foods are not like illicit drugs, because unlike drugs like crack cocaine that are absolutely detrimental to your health, your foods are essential to live. And so while it, it can be a good idea to get rid of trigger foods, ultimately that's not the name of the game. The name of the game is making peace with your foods and realizing that everything in your society from pizza to Chinese food to Mexican food to, hey, you name it, wherever you are in the world, you're going to eat those foods at least a little, even if you don't like a conventional diet. So you have to be flexible, you have to be adaptable, and you have to realize that it's like that in the animal kingdom. People sometimes talk about apes in the wild being vegetarian, and chimpanzees. They're really not. They actually eat a lot of bugs and sometimes feces. So they're getting things that are off their diet sometimes too. So that's why the idea of having a certain set of foods never really helps you. What you want to do is be at peace with all of your foods, even so-called trigger foods, and understand that you are in control. You've got to master them. You can never allow something you eat to own you. Otherwise, it's really eating you. Number four, losing weight can be a lesser of evils business. So true this is. It might involve artificial sweeteners, for instance. It might involve not being able to drink alcoholic beverages like you used to. And let me tell you folks, you cannot drink alcohol casually and expect to lose weight. With 111 calories for a shot of vodka or, or rum, just takes a few of those to be over where you need to be in a given day. It might involve offending someone who made a pie for you and you'd have to tell them, I can't eat that today, but I'll take it with me. And of course, it will involve some hunger. I'm truly sorry, but if you are never a little hungry, you're not going to lose weight. That's universally true. Wish it weren't. Number five, pay your hunger debt and you will never owe your body anything. Very important principle. People sometimes email me and they say, man, you have a lot of willpower. And I say, no, it's just about recognizing obligations and fulfilling them. Yes, it involves some willpower, but not, not so much. It's about strategy and about setting clear and concise rules for when you can eat and when you can't. Now, your body hungers for nutrients. When you eat, a transaction takes place. But only a fool would overpay and expect things to be fine. So don't overpay. Don't feed yourself too much. Pay the debt and respect the terms of the transaction and then be done with it. It's all about maintaining the mind and body connection. And what I mean by that is you find a certain level of satisfaction from your food. You should. If you're hungry for a certain type of food, just like we addressed in our last point, you should make a place in your life for that type of food. But it's a transaction. So, so much is being given and so much is being taken. You have to understand the mind-body connection. You'll take a certain level of satisfaction from your food. You'll be better off from it. And you will be a better individual. So it's not about willpower. It's not about going crazy with dedication. It's just about setting some clear and concise rules and then enforcing them without flex. Cardinal principle number six, you are more productive empty as opposed to full. Now this one is tough because our entire society has taught us that it's not true. Our society today has taught us that you should tank up and be full and then try to do something. So if you're at the office working late, you say, I'm gonna order some takeout Chinese and I'm gonna, then I'm gonna get started on that big project. What you should say is, I'm gonna eat when I'm done. You can function better. Now look at predators in the wild. They work on commission. They do not work on a salary. They're not promised anything. The most honest type of work is commission-based work. If they don't hunt, they don't eat, period. The lions, the bear, guess what? If they're not out there chasing stuff down and killing it and eating it, they're going to have a very, very limited selection of food of it, the kind that doesn't run for them, from them. People who have lost control of themselves and lost control of their weight think they are at their peak when full, which destroys motivation and the entire system of work versus compensation for work. This is a horrible arrangement. The fact is, you don't think as well and are not as productive when full. To get an idea of that, think of the afternoon slump. You go out to lunch at work and then you come back and you're really lethargic. You're tired. You're ready to take a good two-hour nap. The afternoon slump, they call it. The fact of the matter is, that's a bad situation to be in. You don't want to keep having to be full. 
A fit person is happier and more productive when his or her food has been digested. In other words, you quit thinking about food and you're back to a productive mind frame. So one of the keys to successful intermittent fasting is being comfortable and functional on an empty stomach rather than on a full stomach. Your blood sugar will level out and you won't feel discontented and perpetually seeking food. And of course the irony in our society with so much food you would think people would be more full but they're not. They're more hungry. Cardinal principle number seven, it's not okay to not have a system in place to control your eating. This is throughout your entire life, not just when you're in a loss phase. And that's, people have this dieting mentality still in place where they say, now I'm losing weight this month. You, you don't really do that. You do it all your life. This is counterintuitive. And, and this, by the way, is a, an important point because this is the only one on this list that didn't used to be the case. It's counterintuitive because you would think that you just eat when you're hungry. In a perfect world, you'd just be able to eat when you're hungry. But that's bad advice today because there's too much food. Your hunger scale is thrown off. What do you do to control your weight? The bears have winter and they have hibernation. What do you have? You have to recreate hibernation because your society doesn't make it possible. We, cre we recreate that by intermittent fasting. So if what you were doing wasn't working, what are you doing now? If you went off an eating plan recently, what are you doing now? It's never okay to not have a system in place whereby your weight is kept in check. If you lived... 38,000 years ago, as a hunter-gatherer, that would not be true because there were no restaurants, there were no gas stations, there were no places where you can stop and get a soda or a milkshake or a hamburger or tacos. You didn't have any of that. You had to go chase your dinner down, kill it, skin it, cook it, and tell stories around a campfire and go to bed and then get up and do it all over again. There was a checks and balances system but there's not today. So that's the one principle here that is crucial today. Not having a method to control your food intake in a world with societies like ours that are full of food is not acceptable. I've talked to so many people just out and about and I watch them eat and it is the absolutely scariest thing where people just cannot, they can't manage because they're continually eating and they don't want they don't know why they are always hungry it's not okay to be out of control number eight every little step is a step forward it starts with taking control that's why the basic intermittent fasting plan I've given is for those who just need to get started they just need to take control of their food intake it starts with just that first single step and it's scary because a lot of people like me at first weren't motivated and you have to see the little improvements and experience how they change. But every single pound lost is an improvement just as every new habit made leads to yet more improvements down the road. If you take nothing away from this video folks, I hope it's this last point I have highlighted in red. You never arrive. It's an ongoing process. Seth Godin, the self-betterment guru, was asked by someone how can I get started and do more things? How can I how can I get on a big talk show so that I'll be set with my new book? And Seth Godin replied, you have the wrong idea. It has nothing to do with a big breakthrough moment. You never arrive. You never have a breakthrough moment. It's always a series of little moments and the improvement that comes by then. It's completely true. There is no arrival. There is no, I've made it to the top of the mountain. It's just a series of steps and you will do that for the rest of your life. If you expect anything else, then you are definitely you definitely have the wrong idea about your goals. Number nine, your mind will play tricks on you. Write that down a couple times if you have trouble remembering it because folks, even today, it is so difficult to disconnect from negative thoughts and negative thinking. Some days you feel like you haven't moved forward at all. Some days you feel like you're a failure no matter what lower numbers you see on the scale. Even today, I face these sorts of feelings. I can find plenty of things wrong with my body, things I don't like. And the, the, despite the fact that everybody's emailing me telling me how awesome I am, I'll still struggle with the same image issues that you do. Don't ever fall for it. It is a form of temporary insanity. Your mind will play tricks on you. The only thing you can do is keep moving forward and realize that the you of tomorrow will be a better version than the one of today. And the one the day after that will be a better version of the one then. It will always be that way, so long as you can keep perspective. If this was of value to you, please feel free to comment, like, subscribe, and share.